Live. Laugh. <laughs> Howdy, people. That was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an aggressive conversation. <laughs> so yeah, I apologize. Yeah. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Mark James on the podcast today. Our first ever repeat guest. And we're excited because it's not a typical episode. Uh, uh, you want to elaborate on what we're going to be talking about today, Mark? <clears throat> yeah, no one gives a shit about my wrestling. So we're going to talk about shitty things that happen in wrestling. And uh, we're going to bury some things like we're going to bury probably some people. We're probably going to bury some uh, some old old stories that haven't come out in a while. Uh, and uh, and that's it, man. We're going to talk about some do's and don'ts in the wrestling business, some etiquette stuff. And uh, I hope you guys have all that, because, again, if I touch my phone, Lord knows what's going to happen. It'll take me 10 minutes to get back here. So. <laughs> Oh man, but, uh, I am. I've never been so excited for an episode. Yeah. I feel like this is why this podcast yeah. exists, like so we can get to this point. <laughs> yeah, and it should. Like everybody needs a place to get to where you can just do shoot interviews. Like you'll be RF video without the pedophilia. Yeah, yeah that's what we were talking about before. When yeah, you got out. We were just like, yeah, this is turning into like a you shoot video. <laughs> yeah. Which like, is fucking like, great. On YouTube in the mid 2000s with yeah. like RVD and Kevin Nash. It was like, so was Sean really a piece of shit? <laughs> yes. That's the best. It is the best. You're going to have to wait till I like stop, stop wrestling. Actually, no, I'll probably talk about some of that stuff anyway. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, I'm just, I, I'm just an open guy. And, and I'm really, uh, I'm just really at the point that I don't give a shit anymore. Like I'm not going to affect my bookings by talking about this stuff. And uh, you know, for the people that don't have that voice and don't have that, that like confidence to be able to do that. Um, cool, man. Send it to me. I'll, I'll do it for you. I've got a podcast that we do it on. And it's kind of where this started, right? Like we, my wife and I, uh, on our, our podcast, remarkable conversations. Um, thanks for putting that over last week with, yeah. uh, with Alex. I appreciate that. Um, but, uh, we were talking about just shitty stuff that was happening in the building, uh, in the business. There was like a promotion that screwed everybody on pay that week. There was a guy that was a promoter trying to book people, but, you know, telling him he had a foot fetish and he was going to stare at their feet, whether they liked it or not. Like just crazy shit going on. What? Did you not hear that? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Do you, do you have any, it, like, I can't remember the guy's name or anything. It was like Vinny something. Yes, we're up in Connecticut. That sounds like a Vinny. Yeah. Move. Yeah, it, it was uh, Vincenzo, whatever. But, all right, so so here's the deal with that guy. Uh, I don't know if one of you guys can look up his name uh, or find his name. I can't remember. Yeah, I could try to. Uh, I think it's, it's actually on that podcast. I think it's in the description. We maybe put it i don't think i named his name in the description but it was definitely on the thing anyway so the there was a uh, a female worker that um he was talking to about bookings and stuff and he's trying to be all buddy buddy with them because everybody wants to be all buddy buddy when they're booking you and when they need you and then first chance they care or whatever they're gonna fucking either drop you or stab you in the back because that's kind of how the business was for forever and there's still a lot of that shit in the business it's just the carny stuff that goes on no, all right, let me. Okay, none of what I say here, first of all, is the end all be all truth of any situation. Okay, these are my perspectives of things that I've seen over literally 23 years around this business in locker rooms and everything else. And you guys, congratulations, y'all were in your first locker room this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, so. Lots of crazy shit goes on in there. We're all idiots. We just run around and do nothing really. So, um, <laughs> but back in the day, there was a large amount of dumb shit that went on in locker rooms, <laughs> like like coke off of benches. There were you know women outside. There were and and this was like even when I was getting in the business, it was insane. So, but I think that was like the end of a lot of that stuff. Thankfully. And then it's moved on to better places. And then with this, I'm hoping that we can kind of do the same and, and talk about a few of these things and, and maybe get us all to a better place in the end. Yeah, for sure. Awesome stuff. <laughs> um, 
So uh, the Vinny guy, do you, did you find his name? I'm still scrolling. Lot, so. <laughs> it's I, a dangerous I thing do. to type in Vinny foot tennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is, it'll like, probably be... Uh, I can't remember the promotion. I know I posted about it. Uh, if, if if you type in like close. Vincenzo in the okay. search thing, it might come up. I'm uh, very close. I think. <laughs> I post a lot. You get a it's terrible. Speaking of foot fetish, have you heard about Tony Atlas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is foot fetish? Yeah. yeah. All right. Nothing wrong with having a foot fetish, dude. Do you? Do you, man? That's awesome. If you do have that, then great. Then go places where they enjoy people having that and pay for that service or find someone that enjoys that service and perform that service. That is completely up to you. I will not kink shame you. Period. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It, other than pedophilia, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Really. Like, it, just leave the kids out of it. Everything else is free game. Be yourself. Enjoy it. Love who you love. Fuck who you want. Who cares? So, uh, so that wasn't the issue. It's the a, issue was Chenzo that, Visarelli Jr. Thank you. Ah, uh, his father, Vincenzo Visarelli Sr., uh, works for a high school up there and knows about uh, these Oof. things that are going on with this guy. And Vincenzo, I've got messages from uh, a lot of people when when we broke that, and well, we didn't break it, but when we started talking about that. Um, and uh, and he's done this with minors for years, evidently, uh, even though he was like, oh, I got hacked. Um, but he's asked for you okay, know, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, my. God. Yeah. I think I said it. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So it's shit like that, man. And it's it, it, like he's a promoter. You're 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 uh, you're employing these people to work for yeah. you. You you yeah. are like. You're wanting them to put their bodies on the line uh, for your promotion, really, for your game. Uh, ours also, in a way, but you're you're calling us to come up there and do that. The women in this business don't need people, and obviously people are going to subscribe to OnlyFans, like a lot of them have that now, and good on them. Again, make your money. I don't care. You know what I mean? Again, I don't, it, do you. Make your money however you need to make your money. If that's what you, you'd like to do, if that's what's uh, taking care of a need for you in your life, then go for it. If, if you're a person that enjoys purchasing that service and doing that, then fine. Go for it, man. Enjoy that. Again, I don't kink shame. That is completely up to you. It is your life. It is your business. That's it. Fine. As long as they are legal age and above, we are good to go. Okay? Do not... Bring that shit into the workplace. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. the girls, the girls don't need to know that you're fucking subscribed to their OnlyFans page. They don't need to know about that picture that they fucking posted three weeks ago that you liked. It, you know what I'm saying? Like that's disgusting. Really, if if you're gonna be booking them, you shouldn't even be subscribed to that to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, if it, my wife and I talked about it, and, and like we came to the the thought process of you know canceling that apologizing to the the person you know i don't want to bring pronouns into this whatever apologizing to the person saying hey look uh we were subscribed to your only fans i didn't know that you were a wrestler i found out i unsubscribed and i saw your stuff love your what you do i would love to work with you you know what i'm saying yeah. from there on it. exactly it's business it's a fucking business people yeah. That's how we should treat it. It is a business. All this other shit needs to go away. Nobody cares about your political beliefs in this business. They don't care. I'm not saying not to post them on your, your pages or whatever, but when you're working at a show, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. They just want to be entertained. They want to forget yeah. about all that shit. You know? So Yeah, and I mean a booker is a boss that's in a position of power. Like like that it that wouldn't fly at any other job. <laughs> no, so it, not at all. So it shouldn't be allowed to fly there. I mean, it's really no difference. It's just the entertainment business, but I mean, it's still a business. It, but a lot of people don't treat it that way. Like you, yeah. you don't understand. But, uh, and and I think it's, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe it's just like selfish thought of, you know, everybody's kind of in it for themselves and fuck everybody else on the way up. But man, that. 
there's still a lot of that, but these kids nowadays are so different than what it was when I came up. Like it's, it's making me a better person working with a lot of these young guys yeah. uh, and not just in the ring, just in general. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had to look at so many things in different perspectives just to work with them and get them to understand like kind of the old school way of thinking to get it to work in their matches and stuff. Like you, you heard me kind of talking through some of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and trying to figure out like their thought processes in mind. Cause we're on different places when we're doing this stuff. Um, so like, and, and they all help each other. It's the craziest shit. <laughs> Damnedest thing. Yeah. Damnedest thing. Never happened back in the day. I'm telling you, there were there were very few people you could count on. And then when I left the business, like when I got out for those like three years that I was done, uh, I could literally count on like one hand the amount of people that really reached out during that time. So it's like the business loves you, but it it doesn't love you as much as you love it in the end. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but that also it. it told me that I wasn't doing the right things in life either. You know, I, I got out on a bad note. So like you, you deserve that. If I, if I'm an asshole on the way out and I'm being an asshole to people, I don't blame them for not wanting to reach out to me, you know? So, you know, I've, I've been able to get in with, with, uh, you know, with Firestar and working with those kids and everything else now. And, and again, making me a better person. And in, in general, I'm trying to, to, I guess, pass that on to the rest of the world. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> weird, weird thing but um anyway let's get back on subject i keep yeah. i keep veering off sorry no no you're fine i i don't think that's weird at all i want to make the, the place better yeah so yeah definitely not weird not as weird as some of the stuff we're going to be talking about through the rest of the show <laughs> all right so um let's look at can we look at some of the comments that uh people made or or like uh nikki i know made a big post about like yeah. along the lines of, of like do's and don'ts in the business and how to make professional wrestling professional again. And again, yeah. not all these things are going to be right. A, a lot of things are going to be debatable. You know, hopefully we might debate some and other people are going to look at us like we're all idiots. Like, you yeah, never know. I will say the first one. And I think this is kind of universal. Like, I think everybody's heard this, but for anybody who has it, uh, wash your gear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think almost everybody said that. Um, it's amazing that so many people have to, right? Yeah. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> so, I feel like that's just self, self-explainable. Uh, some people, they don't have multiple sets of gear and you do back-to-back shows. Stop at a laundromat. That, yeah, Sean Cruz did that. He posted that he was at a laundromat one day in between shows. Sean Cruz also said that he was like shaving his chest like backstage. So like that's a different level of commitment. Than, that's not a show <laughs> that you probably need to do, but... Dude, yeah. Sean wants it. Like, I, you got to give it to the kid. He wants it. And that the match he had with Malachi this weekend was Ooh. great. Was really, good. really, really good, man. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad the wrestling's going really well for him. Uh, he's a dedicated guy. He really, he deserves to have, you know, some yeah. kind of break or something go well for him. Yeah, we owe a lot to him too because he's, he's one of those guys that helped us when he did have to. Mm-hmm. He like entertains productions for us, just like you have. But yeah, great guy. Um, so I got that post pulled up. Just to be just me reading. Um, I think a lot of the themes are making sure that everybody is like kind of taken care of, like from uh, people that are doing the photography and the rig crew, and just to kind of make sure that everybody is is there, uh, dressed professionally. If you work a rig side as a videographer, photographer, security, wear dark clothes and don't wear sweats. You look like you want to be there, not like you roll out of the bed. I mean, I feel like those are pretty self-explainable. Uh, yeah. Self-explanatory. And then, like, going back to the other one about paying your people, paying your talent and things, yeah. uh, they're completely right. Like, you, we can't run the show without everybody. Yeah. You know? If, if Christian, if you weren't there, we wouldn't have had a timekeeper or somebody else would have to do it. But, you know, <laughs> right. like you were you were just thrown in as a timekeeper and you did a good job. You were able to ring the bell. I'm proud of you. That's better than a lot of people <laughs> do on their first time. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's not like you would think it's really easy. Ref points to you. You ring the bell. Like that's that's really well, like I was kind of floored by like it almost felt like God I know wrestling like I know when it happens but like 
there was a two out of three fall match, and all of a sudden, like, ref wasn't calling for the bell, so I wasn't ringing the bell, and then people were getting mad that I wasn't ringing the bell. I'm like, but you didn't tell me when the falls were happening. You didn't tell me what finishes were. I didn't know who was going <laughs> like, like, I didn't know control. shit. <laughs> But but like literally like they're not they're not gonna tell you anything though like as a timekeeper your whole job is to watch for the referee to go hit the mat for three point at you and then you ring yeah. the bell like that's it yeah. and you're you're keeping track of the the actual time of the match you know what I mean which like oh, I we didn't get somebody that in my job description. Yeah. <laughs> well but they didn't put that on you they had somebody else doing that so we were trying to I guess they were trying to keep it easy for you I don't know um, yeah. Uh, I was in the back trying to figure out this match, uh, but it's cool though, Christian, because you're you're wanting to do some more in the business and you want to do you know yeah. do everything right. So yeah, yeah. what better way to start than time pink, yeah. uh, time people? Yeah, we put yeah. up some barricades too. Yeah, Definitely, we yeah, we're, yeah. we're paying we our were there dues. like two o'clock and we were we were helping yeah. to set up and and all that stuff. Um, Good shit, guys. Yeah, there's see definitely- that's that's it. it to, <laughs> I call it timekeeper. Other people call it bell ringer. I, I understand you do ring a bell. I, don't, I feel like I called it a bell bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just Christian's like personal name, right? Yeah, yeah. Bell bitch. It, was, it was. It was actually quite like coincidental that he ended up ringing the bell because that's what we call him, anyways. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh man but yeah i mean and and that showed you like some good and bad in the business like there's there's always you know some really stressed out people that are kind of aggressive that say things and do things that aren't their normal demeanor um i know when i ran shows it was stressful as fuck i'm sure i yelled at people that didn't mean to and if i did you know whatever i apologize sorry guys you know it's it not whatever to that but it was a really long time ago i don't even remember who they would be at this point (laughs) It's hard to apologize to people you don't know. Um, so, but uh, that's your limitations is past. Is it? I don't. It's been like two thousand four. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Apologies. Everything pre Katrina is all fair game. Oh cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but eventually it's gonna be like pre COVID, post COVID war, yeah. or like world. Uh, kind of we're post COVID world now. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, that reminds me of one of the other ones that we have to speak on. There was a fan interaction. Uh, oh, the spitting. On. Yeah, yeah, and all that, which uh, I I don't know the full story. I wasn't there, right? I saw some video of it, um, and, and this is a great, like, great segment that we can do regarding, like, fan interaction stuff. Yeah. Because everybody's heard and seen people that like jump the railing and do crazy stuff. And there was a, a issue up in New York with the, the Spider-Man guy got up on the apron, threw Danny Jordan down like she was nothing. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah, it's a thing. Um, I, uh, I had a thing where I was brought uh, a possibility for doing a, a crowd spot with the plants uh, in the crowd and like taking a poster and ripping them. First, I don't like doing that anyway. Uh, it used to be a thing like it's it's easy heel heat sure to take somebody's poster and rip rip it up, but you know a lot of times it's it's like this little kid and that's like they put everything they had in that poster, and like you just tore it like it was nothing. And I see my son's reaction when one of his friends accidentally tears his stuff that he like he worked really hard on and shit like that. And uh, I'm not gonna do that to another kid, <laughs> you know. Um, personal preference. Just a me thing. Like I said, I see wrestling a little bit differently now uh, than I used to. Because back in the day, yeah, I was one of those guys. I'd take a sign, tear it up. I'd yell and scream and be an idiot and all that stuff. But, it, like, there's smarter ways to get heat. It's not necessary. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, where where was I going with that? Uh, fan interaction. Fan interaction, yeah. Yeah. So uh, do you want to, like, read what she said? Or are you, we just going to kind of talk about the situation? Sorry, as uh, everybody was uh, off screen for me for a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I could pull it up. But yeah, I think... Basically, the the situation was between her and Alexander Moss. And uh, oh, yeah. and I know I know Moss really well. I've known him for a long time. Uh, he's, he's a great dude. Um, uh, Uber Christian guy. 
like and and that that kind of plays into it not that being a christian makes him a better person or anything it's just it says uh, like he really follows the values as much as possible you know what i mean or his version of the values at least so like he's not a guy that yells and screams at people he doesn't curse at people he's not like you know he he gets his heat and he says things and he's gonna heckle and talk back but he's he's not like fuck you to this fan and you know kiss my ass and i'll beat the shit out he's not one of those guys i'm one of those guys he's not one of those guys you know what i mean uh but again i wasn't there so i don't know the situation i only saw some video of it and i heard you know sides of the story and things like that so um there's there's a a customer of ours uh in the wrestling business there's a fan that comes to shows and uh it's at aml wrestling and uh, I'll talk about AML because they're an outstanding organization that I've worked at a few times, very few times. I do not work there now. They don't book me. They, they don't pay me. I have no need to put them over. But uh, I like Tracy a lot. I like what he stands for in the business and, and how he treats the people that work for him there, or at least how he's treated me in the past. And I appreciate that. He's always been really good to me. Um, so that's all I can go off of a lot of times, right? Uh, what else do you have with your experiences? Moss, same thing, man. I've known him for a really long time, all the way back to Firestar, like when he was baby run, when he was just about to turn heel, was nervous about turning heel, didn't quite know how it was going to get over. And like, man, he figured that shit out, didn't he? Oh, he's Uh, so good. Wow. Uh, Man, him and Sadie. God, just incredible. Um, But anyway, so the situation was, a lady has a child who is uh, on the spectrum. Okay. And uh, the child was front row and they're heckling and talking and things like that. And it was said that uh, uh, he said, he yelled at the kid, said that you're ugly. That's why you don't have any friends. And then this was today, at least she said that. And then also said another point that he would body slam the kid uh, if he came across the barricade. Right. So that's those are the things. Um, she also said that somebody spit on her or the kid. I'm not sure which one and I'm not sure it's the same situation, but evidently it was a wrestler that like spit across the barricade and hit somebody. All right. Uh, which is fucking disgusting. Don't do that shit guys. Uh, we just went through a pandemic. Why are we spitting on people? (laughs) Right. Like I know half of y'all didn't believe the shit happened, but whatever, even if it didn't. Like, why the fuck are we spitting on people? Yeah. What, what's the point of that? Um, we wouldn't want them to spit on us. If I had a fan spit on me, I'd be pissed, right? Like, yeah. it, it's not cool. It's definitely not cool at all. Now, I'm not going to go after the fan. I'm going to work it because it's fucking heat, and I love that shit. <laughs> so uh, if I'm working, I'm eating that up. Uh, but when I get in the back, I'm probably going to go and, and uh, you know, wash my face 500 times um but like you just don't do that the other stuff man he's being a heel and you you gotta you know as promoters you gotta let heels be heels sometimes and i don't like personally i'm and i've talked to my wife about it like i don't see anything wrong with what he was saying it's in character yeah you know it's it's when if you come across this barricade i'm gonna body slam you like that fundamentally is fine (laughs) <laughs> yeah like i don't and she said like her son's on the spectrum she got more offended than the kid probably and then sure the kid's gonna be hurt because somebody said something bad to him he's he's like a nine-year-old or something like that i have a nine-year-old i understand their emotional patterns you know what i mean like it, they're really sensitive some of them and uh stuff like that hurts their feelings like i understand that but you know it, it's not across the line it's nothing that's like lewd if, or like if the kid or anything doesn't like if the kid gets mad at the bad guy wrestler and doesn't like the bad guy wrestler and then he's a bad guy that fundamentally is it's fine like, it yeah job. yeah yeah i mean that's it i i've always thought that like if you're a baby your job is to make as many people in that place like you as possible if you're a heel it's just the opposite yeah you know and yeah, they may respect you. I have a ton of people that respect me at shows. Uh, I, after matches, I have a ton of people that walk up to hey man, great match. And I am cordial and kind to every fucking one of them. Because it doesn't matter. I play a character in that ring, but in real life, I'm a good person and I'm going to set an example. 
You know what I mean? Like you'd be the example, not the exception. And that's that bottom line. But like guys like MJF, they stay in character all the time. Cool. Good. It works for him. You know what I'm saying? But my character doesn't work that way. I'm, I'm like the brood is, is a business. And my job is to feed people's asses to put money on the table and feed my family and, and be able to take care of my kids. That's my job. I don't have to hate everybody in the world to do that. I just got to hate that son of a bitch across the ring from me for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so, but in turn, because I hate this guy, these people are giving me shit over it because they like this guy. Right. So, well, screw you. If you like him, then I don't like you. you kiss my ass. This is fucking wrestling. This is all we do, guys. That's like the whole purpose, right? Like I thought. Um, so, it, like, it never makes sense when I when I see babies going out there jaw jacking with fans like that, like stuff we've seen in the past, you know, to to not bring up events. When I see uh, wrestlers go out and alienate half of their people by bringing a political fucking you know thought process into wrestling or a sign or some shit that yeah. literally will just alienate half the crowd. Yeah. So like, example, like Necro Butcher. Do you see what he's doing now? No. What is he doing? It's a MAGA. <laughs> He's doing a what? MAGA gimmick? Yeah, it's, he's called himself the MAGA butcher or whatever. And uh, okay, he comes out wearing like the American flag pants and like the the MAGA hat, and he's just full on Trump supporter. Well, yeah. I mean, and and that's his right as a person. Like yeah. he can he can be that. And uh, we're I'm not going to talk about how I feel whether it's right or wrong because that's yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? I we I have an opposite thought process politically that has no bearing on on it. But that's his character. Is he a heel? I don't know. It's death. It's like, <laughs> it's like this really like risky. Like this is a promotion that got in trouble because they did a spot with a syringe into somebody's dick recently. I don't know. Why? If you were... <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's um, <clears throat> it's the one like... that Drake Younger has something to do with. Um... It's not CZW. No. No. It's no, like. But it's. it's... It's one kind of like in the same vein. Yeah. Of that. It's like, sure. it's like GCW on PCP. <laughs> <laughs> and the deathmatch stuff is great too. Like, uh, you know, there's some of it that's really enjoyable. I used to watch FMW all the time uh, yeah. out in Japan and watch all their deathmatch stuff. That's actually uh, my, my buddy Moses Manson, uh, you know, unfortunately is no longer with us, but. Uh, him and I, that's how we would book for this company called Power Pro back in the day was we yeah. would turn on old FMW shit, watch all these crazy ass matches with like uh, back over when Foley was over there and, and Funk was over there, plus like Hayabusa and, and uh, all those guys. Right. So good shit. <laughs> um, and like we would come up with ideas for for matches here because nobody was doing that shit. So we we're trying to do something different. Um yeah. And, uh, and we, we had like Suicide Steel Chamber match was a take of, uh, I think it was FMW versus War. Uh, they did a huge like cage match. It was kind of like War Games, but there's only one ring. Um, but we did it like it was like, just random draw. We had the fans like pick a name out of a hat of who was going to come next. Really dumb idea. Didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but we tried to be different. Um, they, they pulled three heels names out first there's there's five people on each team they pull out three of the heels first uh it, it kind of worked out actually two of them was part of a tag team and then there was another guy and then they pull my name i'm the first baby that comes in the match fuck me i gotta deal with three of these assholes as soon as i walk through this door right um but then it like my partner came out like my tag partner at the time and it it, it actually worked out but anyway crazy ass match Sorry, that's not what we're talking about today. What's that? Was this sticks or the brute? This was uh, uh, neither, actually. Ooh, <laughs> <it's been. laughs> uh, so I worked at this place, Power Pro Wrestling. Uh, this guy, Dick Foley, ran it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he was real big on gimmicks. There's another place called Gouge Wrestling up in Raleigh, and they do a lot yeah. of gimmick stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, we've, and we've Rob, been a few of those. Cool. Uh, Grog's good people. Like they always do interesting shows, but they always have gimmicks there. And like Foley went up there and worked with them sometimes. Um, I always used to get told when I was a little bit like chunkier and stuff or whatever. Like I looked like um, uh, Bubba Ray when he was at, like 
old ECW Bubba. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and I had this dude with me uh, named Tito Rain, and we were the men for hire back then. I've always liked APA gimmicks. That's kind of what I'm in now, the brutality thing. So <laughs> I've always liked APA gimmicks. So uh, we were doing that back then. That was when I was still sticks. Uh, and then we got brought into something with Foley. I don't remember what it was or how we turned into it, but somehow we turned into the Doodly Boys uh, for like a good <laughs> six to eight month run uh, for for a tag thing. There, we we built it up to a TLC match at this like spring spring fling show. It's on YouTube. Um, uh, Doodly Boys versus fucking I don't remember. Trevor Lee was in the match. Oh wow! <laughs> Trevor Lee was in the match. He was like 15 at the time. He was a little drag, and he had a mask on. We threw him all over the damn place. It was ridiculous. But uh, but yeah, it was it was fun. If you, I'm sure you guys are gonna find the match because yeah, I'll have to go. It's you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm I'm sure there's gonna be something with the video of it fucking playing next to me. So uh, well. <laughs> We can talk about that too. But yeah, we, we built up to a whole thing. Uh, like, a, But I did uh, Double Ray Doodly was my gimmick uh, for a while. And then uh, Cleavon Doodly was my tag partner. And we ran the old ECW thing at the purple tie dye and, uh, and, you know, all that shit. It was, it was fun. I yeah, love that a lot. <laughs> I, I hated it. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> It was horrible. I felt like such a fucking ripoff. It was terrible. Uh, did, I mean, it was over. Did you it was find over yourself, like, like did what? you find yourself having a like vested interest in Bubba Ray's career going forward after that? Like, because you had felt like a bond to him somehow. Never. No. Not a bit. No. I did watch a lot of his ECW stuff. He's a great heel, and and I stole oh, yeah. uh, I stole a lot. Well, I didn't steal, but I well, yeah, I fucking stole it anyway. So. Cause I had, I was doing the damn character. I had to do a shit. So I'm, I'm like, yeah. you know, mimicking his style and, and some of his moves and stuff. And that, that's kind of, that's really what I hated about it. Even though it's it, like literally where it, it's paying homage to a, an amazing tag team. You know what I mean? Like they're, right. they're incredible. And it was the best, uh, best impression that I could give to, to them and try to do them the right way. So to me, right. the right way was uh, I took a family friendly show in Sanford, North Carolina and started cursing everybody out and uh, just being a complete jackass and starting riots in there and fucking yelling at people and just trying to get in fights with everybody every week. And I mean, it was just a thing. I was, I was trying to be Bubba as far as like his heat and promos and all that stuff was like, it needed that fucking intensity. And if I couldn't do it that way, I wasn't going to do it at all. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Fair. Um, but I still hated the shit because, like, it was. I, I felt like I was being a ripoff, and I didn't want to do my own thing. And that's that's actually what catapulted me right into the Mark James thing, and then uh, into the whole brute aspect of it afterwards. So, you know, thankfully I got that out of out of the way. But mm. yeah, it was the thing. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I keep getting off subject, man. It's turning yeah. like it's it's half like old shoot interview of like my shit and then half of it like don't be a dick to people in wrestling yeah i think that kind of <laughs> boils down to it, what a lot of it is it's just don't be a dick yeah yeah if given the choice be better yes it's not that hard it really isn't uh like i i don't understand like there, there's the wrestling is for everybody movement that's out there and that and it's great like there's a lot of people that wrestling is for I feel like that means like it's for all the people that really care about the sport. And if you don't give a shit about it and you're just in it for the money, then go the fuck away. Kindly leave. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're just like I was uh, when I got out of the business for, for those couple of years, if you're just an old fucking grumpy asshole that's going around and just doesn't want to be there and kind of, it's like you're in the place fucking leave. Those kids don't need you. You know, that's not the veteran service that you can give. And like, I really want to be a better and not saying I had bad people to look up to, but I feel like there were some really bad examples of people back then. <laughs> so just in general, just because people were just that that way. So like, I want to I want to be able to be a better example. Like I said earlier, be the example, not the yeah. exception, uh, you know, to a lot of the guys that I'm working with now. And uh, I just hope that you know, I can help them out and, and do the right thing. 
Uh, and that goes a lot for, for the women in the sport too. I'm, I try to be an advocate for women's wrestling as much as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm always trying to, to, to like Amira is a really good friend of mine. Uh, like not like outside the business, it's not like we hang out, but I'm, I'm very interested in her career. I met her when she was trying to learn how to do a fucking flip bump in the ring. Yeah. We've, we've known each other for a while. Like I'm really excited about the, the progress that she makes and, you know, women like, uh, you know, Ella Envy that's out there just killing it. Brittany Jade that's out there just killing it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's so many Savannah Evans from the areas out there. Just pretty, gosh, just demolishing everything. Dude, she's so good. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, you know, in that respect, like I try to be, um, I've been lucky enough that a lot of women consider me like a safe space in the business. And I try to continue to be that. Uh, and, and I'm always going to put it out there. If anybody's ever like uncomfortable at a show or a promoters making you uncomfortable or a fan is making you uncomfortable, like uncle Brute is fucking around. Like y'all come find me. I promise you. If I'm not available, go find my wife. If y'all know who my wife is, she'll she'll help you. Yeah. Uh, even if she doesn't like you, she don't care. She will help you get away from the situation, and then you can fuck off, and she'll fuck off, and everybody will be fine. <laughs> so, but the, just the important thing is just being safe out there because there's so many creepy ass fans. There's fans that like you. You don't need to be touching all over the women and like. I'll call them gorgeous online all the time and oh, just yeah. kissing her ass. There's places for that. If you want to do that, go support them. Go. Yeah, go to their OnlyFans. Pay them for it. You know what I mean? Like, if that's what you yeah. want to do, go, go. If you're going to waste their fucking time all day long, <laughs> then go pay them for their fucking time. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's just fucked up. Like, they're, they're giving a service and, or somebody to that effect is giving a service. And if they're not, don't fucking bug them. Like, it's ridiculous the shit that I've seen, it, like, women tell me about where guys go into their inboxes and people slide into their inboxes. The women wrestlers have it horrible. I, I've gotten some from, from certain, like, guys out there and shit like that that I'm like, hold on, dude. <laughs> Ally, not in, but thanks for the compliment. Um, but like, you know what I mean? I've gotten some crazy shit. So I know that women out there get fucking insane well, it, messages. It's that, it's that issue of like social media and open access that, that people think because they see these intimate moments of people's lives that they post on social media that they have the right to have opinions yeah. and then talk to them like, like like anytime they want and say whatever the fuck they want. And it's like, if you wouldn't say it in real life, don't fucking yeah. say it on the internet. But if you would say that in real life, go get help. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace made a book of just shit that people have sent her. She was selling it at WrestleCade, I think, like 2019. No but, shit. Yeah. So at least she's genius. Like, yeah, but like, Mom's like if man. you think about what goes into wrestling, it, wrestling is a passion. Like, you're these are people that are training multiple days a week. They're they're driving all this way. They they're doing this because they love wrestling, not because they want the attention of you this dirty asshole like they want to get into the ring because that's what they grew up watching and that's what they love and this is their passion they don't have to for the attention of you yeah like, yeah they're it's not the same it's not the bra and panties it's yeah. not the model wrestlers anymore like these women are out there kicking ass and it's yeah. awesome you know uh i love to see it dude but it, but in the same respect like they don't, they don't need to grab it all over them. They don't need you, you know, saying like shitty things to them. Like respect the people that are out there. Yeah. We're in the end, we're entertainers. Like if you, if again, if, if your kink is to degrade people, there's places to go for that. Yeah. Plain yeah. and simple. You know what I'm saying? If your thing is to be degraded, there's places to go for that. I promise you. Yeah. If you don't know where they are, reach out. We'll help you find them. Um, but, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, cause everybody's got their thing and, and I don't know what everybody's thing is. And I'm not, I don't give a fuck what you do behind closed doors. Again, as long as you're not hurting others, it's consensual and everyone's adults. Yeah. Right. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but there's too many things that go on that are not consensual. I E Vinny staring at the girl's uh, feet. And I, I can't remember her name and I hate that, but you know, staring at her feet in the locker room, talking about that and like, oh, I know, you You know, you don't know this, but I have a foot fetish. I'm going to be looking at your feet, whether you want it or not. Like, you can't do that, like, that shit. I just hate that shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and even at that like guys don't don't google over the women like it's ridiculous man like act like you fucking have some sense like you're and that, and that kind of goes into like an issue i have with certain promoters is like you have such a platform to do amazing things and put on these amazing shows that some people like would love to be in a position to do and mm -hmm. but but the ones that don't take that seriously yeah. whether it's that whether they're putting on these shows that are written just for them, just for their enjoyment, or like it's such a wide variety of just like, guys, you're in this awesome position to do great things and you choose to like, I don't know what it is, but, but they fuck it up. Whether they're being inappropriate, yeah. whether what they're putting on should never actually be happening in a ring, like whether it's for them or a select, it's just yeah. not being in touch with reality. It's just not when... Yeah. I, mean, I, I think I think when WWE did the the um, HLA shit with with Bischoff and like a lot of the NWO stuff was really like sexual like forward um, yeah. everything in the Attitude Era like it was it's just that it was that that time frame in history yeah you know everybody was just a little more fun and free and and like doing whatever at the time you know it's it, history always repeats itself it was the seventies all over again basically yeah. um new new age hippies and then now like people are becoming a little more reserved and private again and they want they want to claim their their bodies back and their lives back yeah because it's it's not your body like just because you have a view on like me being a guy that's overweight you know whatever fans are gonna call me fat i don't give a shit i'm a heel I, they need something to yell at me about anyway yeah so like it doesn't bother me um but to other people, they would take that personal. I would say it, you probably should hold off on becoming a wrestler for a little while, if that's the case. Because if somebody says something to you uh, on on like that side of the crowd, like if they're on that side of the barricade and you lose your shit over it, then you're the bad person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I I really want to know. Like we, I know we kind of jumped back and forth, and we've been between like not treating people like shit or being an asshole right. or a pedophile to the fan interactions things. But these are both like really big categories. I feel Yeah. Um, the, most of the black eyes in the business nowadays are shitty people that we find out had a bunch of kitty porn on their, their fucking computer somewhere or well, it's like uh, guys that like, it comes out that everyone knew about this forever. Didn't say anything. And it's been going on for longer than like, well, it, like, it's, like it, it's a shitty a business, record. Christian. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a shitty business full of shitty people for a long time. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff was just pushed on the rug. It was pushed on the rug in society in general, yeah. not just in the business. It was everywhere. Yeah. That's you know? the too movement coming about. Like, yeah. Like, any like entertainment business, like, they had the, there was a specific one for wrestling. I don't remember which, what it was called, but, uh, yeah, every entertainment industry kind of had that change where it's like, oh, we're not gonna sit. Oh out. yeah, oh yeah, and and, and it, it killed. But it's awful. Like, but look where it was before that, though, man. Like, who is it? Joey, uh, the 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 Ryan. Dick guy. What's his name? Joey Ryan. Yeah, killed yeah. his career. Marty oh, completely. God. And I'm, I mean, I'm not upset about it. You know what I'm saying? But. But the guy was in the ring having people grab his cock. Like, what do you think yeah. he was doing outside it's the ring? It's surprising that it took that long for anything yeah. to be said. Like, really? Because it was the most on-brand thing in the world. Did like, you hear that? what happened to him? At, so he got a job working at Disneyland <laughs> like as a, like a oh. character in the park. And yes. people contacted Disney, and they were like, hey, this is the dude that's working here. And he got, they got him fired from his Disneyland job. Wow. Wow. See, man, don't fuck with these kids nowadays. Yeah, like the younger generation, I'm trying to stay on all y'all's good side. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, there you was all understand this internet way better than I do. Y'all y'all like come together like Voltron and we'll fuck up somebody's life in a heartbeat. I'm yeah. mm, we're good. My favorite thing to do is I'll see like a TikTok of like somebody talking shit about the restaurant and then I'll go look at their Google page and it's just like they have a one star like review. Like it's just already derailed. Wow. It's yeah. it's so crazy. It's it's that fast. And like guys, you know, some people understand their like the magnitude of their voices. And I wish more people in the wrestling industry would. Like guys like uh you just said TikTok, like Keith Lee, uh yeah. that's on there, the the food guy. 
And I just, he's just the first guy that came to my head because I watch a lot of his stuff. I like his stuff. Um, but like, he understands the magnitude of his voice. Like he's, he's like, look, if y'all go up there, don't be showing your ass. Cause like, there's a lot of y'all, <laughs> you know, you're going to overwhelm them and this is how it works. So if you get bad service, this may be it. Try it in a couple of weeks and see if it's still the same way. Like he's always trying to, and saying like, this is my thought process in it. Yeah. Not everybody's, you know? So it's, it's good when people understand that power of their voice like that. Because so many people don't, and they, it really fucks up a lot of really good things. Oh yeah. Uh, as as fans, question. Yeah. yeah. Back to the fan reaction thing. How do you feel about plant spots? How do you feel about like people being planted in the crowd and like doing things with the wrestlers? It doesn't really do anything for me. Like, I, it's like I, I feel like it enhances the experience. But I feel like the like type of fan that we are, like the it always goes to a soup. Like if it's unbelievable, like then it's wrestling. Like like if somebody's like super injured, oh it's wrestling. Like there's never like sure. just kind of go back to the suspension of disbelief. Well, so, like because going into it as fans, it was all it was it's I mean, quote, like it from the get go it was entertainment. It was never that. It was never this is real. Like this is hundred percent. This is happening. Um, and I hate spots like that. Like they did that at DP DBW yeah, recently. Brett Watts got pulled out of the, the crowd by fucking cruel. And yeah. Like I Saw really that. don't like that because it almost um, weaponized might not be the right word, but it almost justifies a fan thinking that a fan that doesn't know better that might not have all their mental fa- faculties yeah. about them to say. This is okay. This can happen. So it can go both ways. And it's like, no, there needs to be a clear separation. Yeah. They need to know that fuck around and find out. Like yeah. like yeah. like truly they they need to know definitively that you can't do that. Because a stupid fan will. Yeah, not even percent are gonna have like the common sense, but like look at the guy that tried to kill Ronald Reagan because he wanted an actress to like him. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't assume that like everybody is gonna think of it as logically as you are. Yeah. There are people out there that are not on that wavelength. And and yeah, lots, lots of crazy people and lots of people that want attention and lots of people that will do things for attention just because like um, it's scary, man. Yeah, I, I saw that spot with with Cruel and, and Grant um, and, you know, good on again, both really talented guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from them in particular. Wrestling has done this for years. I don't know how many other people are coming out and actually saying anything against it per se, but if I'm one of the first people then I'm fine with that, uh, I'm completely against plant spots. I said it earlier. I'm completely against it I, I, for exactly what you just said. I think it gives people that sense that they can just, you know, jump over that barricade and do something anytime they want to, or, or that it's okay for us to reach across and hit somebody. And I've seen it. I've seen three plant spots at shows in the last like four months that I've been on. And then I was asked to do one and I declined. You know what I mean? And the guy understood that, quick, but I, I declined because I'm not, I'm not involved in that shit. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm not going to, I, I don't want to egg that on. First off, I want to get heat. I want to like make people like upset in that moment. Uh, not to the point that they're going to like, stew about it for the next three days or anything, but maybe they will. I don't know. Um, but like, I want to get heat, but I also need that separation because I, I don't want, I don't want to have to hurt someone or possibly get hurt myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And again, I'm not saying I'm going to beat everybody's ass. I'm just saying that I don't know. And I don't want to take the chance of finding out either way. I don't see the purpose of it. Cause that's not what my fucking job is. Yeah. My yeah. job is to come here and entertain. Yeah, Yeah. there's like very like little local shows that are doing like security have any sort of metal detector. You don't know what that person on the other side of the rig has. Yeah, especially now, man. Yeah, I'm shocked. Like, if unless it's like a like a kind of a TV product, you're probably not going to get metal detected. There's not going to be anybody. And and even even when it's like a like I 
pay per view product and it's like they're streaming it or like yeah. once when they have tons of cameras set up, they have a crew, they're still not doing it. And it's just yeah. I'm mm. just kinda of floored but like we're not bringing anything in, but we're just walking on it and like Yeah. yeah. I mean not I, I mean, be us. It it makes you nervous sometimes, especially the state of the world. You know, there's there's shootings everywhere over dumb shit. Somebody's turned around your driveway, they get shot. Somebody accidentally grabbed the wrong door handle for the car they thought was theirs, they got shot. Uh, he's watching know, Rick and Morty while they're driving to work. Yeah, <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm an asshole. I feel bad. I feel um, my ass in front of a lot of people anyway. <laughs> So a, a thought I had about the show we were just at was the um, Tita Stone had that moment with that fan. And sure. an issue I had with that is because we were helping set up barricades earlier in the show, we knew that those barricades were kind of messed up. And yeah. we were like, hey, don't zip tie every single one. Like, that was a question we had. And and they're like, no, it's fine. Da, 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 da. But if that would have happened, there never would have been a situation where they were that close, and that situation could have ever happened. Uh, That's well, my see, thought. I might be wrong on that. That's just well, uh, Christian's about thought. Every show we've been to, the barricades come out. Yeah, yeah, the barricades are shit everywhere. Yeah. Like it's That's it's not it. Uh, well, a lot of shows around here use, and they're not shit barricades. They're just not made for us to run through the damn things. Yeah. Like they're yeah. they're just regular barricades, and like they, it's all uh, Bob Keller. Uh, is the guy that rents out the ring and the barricades and, and like entranceways and stuff. And like Bob's top notch. Uh, like his stuff's really good. He, he brings it there. Rings always solid. Like it's safe. Everything's safe. Like it's usually good. Uh, nobody said to anybody not to hit the barricades. So a lot of people hit the barricades like idiots. I don't know why, like we can't just see the barricades are like not really strong and probably shouldn't be hit. But then also it's that immersive fan experience because so many fans love that, you know, throwing somebody into them type shit that they do in Ring of Honor and PWG and, and a lot of these, you know what I mean? Like those kind of promotions. So it really just depends on the fan on what kind of experience they want. Some people love it when they fall in their lap. I know um, right. I was working Mike Devine uh, in Selma and uh, he, we did a spot where I was chasing Johnny um johnny shore and mike came up behind me hit me in the back and i fell into the guardrail and the guy was trying to get it he's like wait 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 get a picture i'm like i'm selling you know what i mean like dragging my face down the the freaking guardrail trying to hold on as long as i could and not look like i was actually staying there for a picture for the guy but again he fucking paid for the spot i'm gonna try and get him the picture yeah. if he can do it well if it looks right you know what i mean yeah but like i knew not to hit that barricade hard as shit because I already did that a couple weeks earlier where I threw Lee Valiant into a barricade up at uh, Extreme Shock Wrestling, and my wife hated me because she was sitting in the front row and I hit her knee. So, uh, yeah, I try not to. Do, again, she keeps me on a good path, <laughs> not doing dumb shit <laughs> in one, the business. One of my What's favorite that? clips, one of my favorite clips that exists um, <laughs> is a good example of a wrestler falling into someone's lap. We were at a DPW show. Diego did some crazy spot. Yeah, got like on a barricade, like oh, it was on a chair. On the barricade on the chair. He, he's like sitting up on the chair, and he falls into Daniel's lap. Yeah, and there's a video somewhere of it. Oh, he knocks. We... So I'm sitting there. We're like second row. He moves through. He stands up on the chair, like right up close to me. My dumb ass can't like hold myself, and I just fall over. Wow. Yeah. Mean, like, that's awesome. It was, it was, yeah, it's a moment. We're, we're having them on next week, so we'll talk about it. But that's awesome. Good <laughs> yeah. stuff, man. Those are always fun. I've had some where uh, there's a, a lady that has followed us in like the Kinston area for a long time. Uh -huh. And uh, we did a spot with her where somebody kind of got like thrown into her lap and uh, it it broke the whole chair and everything. Like it was, it was such a funny moment. She loved it. She thought it was great. But, but again, hindsight being 2020, uh, like we knew her and knew that she would be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like knowing it's one of those things, like you're pranking a friend. Uh, but like, I wouldn't do that to some random person. Ah, I can't say that either. Shit. I, I threw Lance Lude at a guy <laughs> in the audience one time uh, in Fayetteville. Um, my tag partner and I actually Lance like dove out of the ring at us. That's that's online somewhere too. It was at Warzone Wrestling, uh, Brutes against the Ugly Ducklings, I think it was. 
Um, yeah, because uh, Rob and Lance. Anyway, uh, so Lance does a dive over the top. Jimmy and I caught him, and there there was some guy like three rows back at the bar uh, talking shit to us. And uh, I told him earlier I was going to throw something at him, so we threw Lance at him. <laughs> That's what we did. So it was a really fun show. It was a good match. So anyway, uh, what what else was on the? If anything else, I, I don't yeah. want to keep you guys all night I, either. Yeah, so. though, I, I think just like. Like, uh, I think is, we should do one of these every other month. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm down, man. I I love just shooting the shit. I I'd love to get your feedback on shows. I think this could be like a really good way to to kind of like recap shows in the area that you guys have watched. Yeah, and like give yeah. give a good like honest feedback fan wise of like because, shit that's going on in the area. Because it can kind of be a, a flipped perspective bit. Because or, like you could come in and ask questions that like wrestlers oh. would want to know the fan perspective on oh i like that i think i think that could be really cool because like we we do go to a lot of shows and we have strong opinions but like normally we're just interviewing guys that being like so early memory wrestling what's up sure <laughs> it's very fun. It, like well the the second and third time that you're going to be having people on is going to be more fun for all of you because then you get away from yeah. like the basic bullshit and then you just yeah. start talking you yeah, know those true. are always the most fun like, um yeah, no, let's yeah, let's talk about that, guys. Let's see if we can do that. And maybe not even just for me. Like you can do you can do like a, a rotating guest list of people that are like inquisitive about that kind of shit. Because I ask you guys questions all the time. Yeah. Uh I'm I'm literally that guy. As soon as the show's over, I'm like, hey, uh I found it. Here's the video of it to refresh you. Tell me what you think. Yeah. <laughs> Cause no, I want to know. I, I really... Like I really enjoyed when when you were curious about the the Firestar show. Like I really enjoyed. I, I I took like an hour while I was supposed to be working, and I'm like, okay, let's like let's break break it down match by match, which made me then appreciate what I watched even more because awesome. it like felt more reflective. And but like I, I really enjoyed doing that. So like I am I'm always down for for stuff like that. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the only reason why we're doing this is for the fans. You know, yeah. like obviously for our somewhat twisted masochism uh, of entertainment, but like, it's still, it's still for the fans. Like it's for you guys to enjoy. So if we're not asking you guys, that's why I love uh, uh, David Rhodes and the, uh, the strong style. God, it's such a long name. What is the name of it? Strong style uh, match review guys. Yeah. Like they're, they're really awesome people. And David does such an amazing job. It's terrible. I'm going to be uh, in their WrestleCade booth too. So, uh, I really need to remember their name. Uh, strong Style Rock Wrestling Pro Review. Wrestling review at pro a Wrestling session. Review. That's, yes. Thank you. Strong Style Pro Wrestling Review and Assessment. Go Just cut everything else out and just like <laughs> merge it all together like I said. It all. David Rhodes from Strong Style Pro Wrestling Review and Assessment. There you, there go. you go. That's the line. Anyway, so... Um, but he does a great job too, and and sometimes it's it's just like kind of face value stuff. But he'll he'll really get into like the nitty and gritty on matches, and and uh, he I actually met him. He reached out to uh, review some of my stuff for me, and he's like, "Look, I know like you really probably don't need the help. You've been around for a while, but you know this is a service that I'm offering. It's free. I just want to you know get my name out there, and you know maybe if I do your stuff and I help you out, you can pass my name around to some other people, and yeah. you know I can help them out." And, you know, he was helpful. We talked about some good things and, and uh, he pointed out a couple of things that I could work on, especially with me just coming back. Like I'm still kind of rusty. I've only been back for a year now and I was gone for over three. Yeah. So like, I'm really just starting to feel normal again in the ring and feeling comfortable in the ring. Like these past, like two, three shows that I've been on. Um, so like he, he was really helpful with, with that kind of stuff. So you guys, the same thing. I, I love to pick your brains about it. I think you're, you guys put thought into the wrestling product and, uh, and how it can actually get better. And you're honest in your feedback um, regardless. Cause we've talked about everybody's show like that. All, we've yeah. been to Firestar. We talk about them. We've talked about uh, UPW uh, from Saturday and your thoughts about some of that stuff. And I'd love to talk more about it. Um, yeah. I love to get you guys out to extreme shock wrestling sometime yeah. and yeah. you can check that out. They're fucking amazing people out there. Um, top guy. Brute. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> top guy brood out there. Oh yeah, man. Um, but 
it's there's a lot of really good places that that are running i'm i'm lucky enough to work for a lot of like really good places right now um so like just try and find those if there's something that sets you off uh as a wrestler like with a promoter when you meet them if there's something weird it's probably weird like don't go you know what i'm saying yeah like, the money's not worth it find another book in that weekend um protect yourself too ask for a fucking deposit why not even if it's like 10 bucks you know they may laugh at you you may lose some bookings over it because people are assholes but in the grand scheme of things, like we have to protect ourselves. This was something I did want to get into. I'm sorry, guys. I know we were kind of shutting it down, but um, the the pay aspect of of wrestling. Uh, everybody takes a chance when we come out to the ring, right? When we when we come to a show somewhere, I'm driving multiple hours to get somewhere. Usually, bringing my family with me because we travel together. Uh, typically, my wife drives, thankfully, because I'm exhausted most times. I'm up way too early. Um, so like we we just want to be able to go somewhere do the job have a good time get paid go home right the promoter wants to put on a great show pay everybody take care of everything he needs to get out of there on time not have any issues with the building and go home and as long as everybody feels that dynamic we're all good but there are certain times that either promoters uh can't afford it or try to run a show off the door and it happens a lot less now than it used to, but it still happens. Um, and guys get screwed on pay and it's fucking bullshit to be honest. Like I, I don't know that there's a happy medium in this cause I've gotten the promoter side and I've gotten the, the wrestler, obviously the wrestler side for me. Um, but like, if you send a deposit and they don't show up, then the promoters have the deposit and all the advertising and all the time that they put into this match. And now they got to switch something and it just sucks for the promoter. And I get that. Um, but the wrestler also is possibly driving three, four hours and wrestling and putting their life on the line in the ring for your promotion yeah, uh, yeah. and hurting themselves for your promotion and taking time away from their families for your promotion and for them selfishly obviously um but also like they wouldn't i wouldn't leave my house if i didn't get booked that day <laughs> you right. know what i mean like, right I, and I, I feel like i feel like there's such i don't want to say a small percentage but i feel like most guys aren't gonna take a deposit and run because that's bad press for them people are gonna be talking about that and like ultimately these guys want to be working they want to be yeah. like doing yeah. uh, because the, the the obvious argument is the Jacob Fatu stuff recently of him just taking deposits and apparently not showing up to shows, which is shit. Oh wow! And some and yeah. some guys some guys don't like 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 some guys don't show up. But like God, like most of these guys, like like a Stephen Meeks, he's gonna show up. He just wants to work. He's gonna show up. Like, yeah. like he's. I, but the, but that deposit might be the difference between him being able to go or not because like gas and like he's he's like just. I don't know. I think certain good. Well, I mean, it's like a, it's, a good thing. It's a good faith thing. You know what I mean? Like it, it's a small investment. It's like maybe ten percent. If even if you're asking for fifty, ask for like a five dollar deposit. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're if you're asking for a hundred, ask for like a ten dollar deposit or twenty five or some shit. You know what I mean? Just yeah. enough that you know like your gas is paid for the day of the show, even if it's three weeks before. Yeah. Like fucking put the money aside. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stop being such a financial shit bag myself included i'm terrible with money um so but but like it's it's one of those things promoters make sure you're fucking paying them though like and everybody there's there's not a person on that show that doesn't isn't ne necessary for everything that happens all the way from the guy that brings in a board to the ring all the way to the main event uh you know top guy in the organization everybody is necessary um the security guards, the the ring announcer, the referees, the photographers, the videographers, the social media guys, you you name it. The the per, the ring runner, the person just bringing our clothes back and making sure they don't get lost in the crowd of fans. There, all those people mean something because that shit costs money. Not my shit. My shit's cheap. I'm I walk. I I don't really have a lot, but a lot of guys pay stupid money for 
headdresses and big like Kakoa. Do you know Kakoa down in Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Like this dude's got, he put like 800 bucks into his whole uh, entrance attire and then his ring gear. Like he, he puts out a presentation. It looks amazing too. The guy's great. Uh, if somebody stole like part of his gear, yeah. fuck me, man. That First off, you're ruining his entire presentation. He can't use that gear the same way because he's going to have to change something out of that, or he's going to have to rebuy that item and get it remade again. And it's fucking expensive. And the second time they make it, it's never right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just, it's not the same. So like you're really screwing other, other people over uh, in that respect. But, but that ring runner is bringing the shit back to locker room for us. Thank you so much. That that is huge because I can't tell you how many like shirts and shit that I've lost over the years from people. It's whatever. Um, but take care of those people. You yeah, you're gonna have volunteers and you're gonna have friends of yours that are gonna be helping you out in your show. But like if you if you're not friends with them, if they're driving in and doing a whole bunch of shit for you and you're asking for them to be at that building at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. And we're going to be at that building until 11 o'clock that night, 12 o'clock that night. Fuck, you, you need to be paying them. And I'm not I'm not going to set a price, but you need to be taking care of the fucking staff. Period. I, I don't I, really know another I, way to say that. I don't, I don't think they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. But there's people that don't. They do that all the time. They fucking just take advantage of people. And that, that's what Nikki was talking about in her stuff. There was a, a, a few other photographers that always bring that up, too. Like you just get shit on and it sucks because like I, I love photographers, man. I don't take pictures. Y'all make me look amazing sometimes as hard as that may be to do. And I appreciate that. Um, the videographers, I never remember to, like my wife will record my stuff, but I don't want to put that on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't yeah. look, look as good. I want quality video so I can put stuff out there and, and get more bookings off of it and, and things like that. I can't do that without these people. Yeah. And some people would say, yeah, sure, you pay them. Cool. I pay them every single time. Every person I've gotten pictures from, any promo pics that I use, any time that I even change my profile picture, I always ask for permission. I always ask them if there's a fee involved in it and if there's any rights because I don't want any drama if I have a picture on my table or if I send a photo to a, a promoter that says that, oh, that's my picture. You can't use that. Uh, right. I don't need that shit. So I'm, I'm going to, but that's business though. Like I'm going to treat this like a business and like yeah. other people need to do the same, you know? Uh, again, I sorry. I feel like I'm rambling. So I just stop. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I think we, when we started this, you said people are getting stiffed. People are big pervs. And then we did the fan stuff. So we've covered like the big three. Uh, yeah. Is there anybody like, cause we, we've buried some people, but uh, let's just have a rapid fire berry session. Two <laughs> to three people just right off the dome that you just want to put to the ground. Fuck Thomas Simpson. Uh, yeah. Plain and simple. Fuck Thomas Simpson. Uh, he's a pedophile. He's a predator. He's a piece of shit. I don't know how the hell he works for Clemson. They should fire his ass. Yes, I fucking said it. I don't give a shit. Sue me. Uh, I'll give you my bills. Fuck off. Um, he he's. Legitimate predator. He tried to uh, he tried to uh, sexually assault me during a match, like in a match in the ring, during a match at a fucking brewery in Charlotte. Um, and I have witnesses for that, so fuck around and find out if you want to, Thomas. Um, and it, he's he's very lucky I didn't beat the shit out of him that night. So fuck you, Thomas Simpson. You're a piece of shit. Uh, you're staying on the business. I don't know how the fuck you got involved with Omega or the Hardys, and they should never, ever fucking speak with you again. Uh, all these people that know you should absolutely fucking write you off. Uh, you're a piece of shit. So there's there's one, not so rapid, but that's a fire. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> uh, any? Well, uh, there was a guy in Texas last weekend, um, Hustle Hard Wrestling, uh, stiffed his locker room, fuck you. I don't know your name, but whoever the hell used to run that, fuck off. Um, Vinny, we already buried, uh, man, there's, there's like a bunch of old promoters and shit like that. I just like, I'm, I'm, I just want to get rid of, if, if you feel like you have to take advantage of people to get ahead in this business, you need to leave. If you feel like 
you need to push down the the younger crowd in here and continually berate them and belittle them. You need to fucking leave. Get the fuck out of the locker rooms. Get out of their heads. You're not doing anything to help any of these kids. You're not a good vet. Yeah. You know, like we don't need that shit. There, there's guys like uh, like myself, who's an old, old grizzled guy, like Bob Evans, who's an old grizzled guy, the, the Jack Vaughn guy. And like, yeah, we'll get a little bit of heat for being kind of old school guys. But I also know those guys as being, I don't know Jack, but I know Bob, uh, it, like as being probably some of the most helpful people in the business. Oh, yeah. you know for everybody and and like if we can be our old stubborn grumpy asses all the time and still be kind to people and still treat people with respect and still help everybody and try to serve as much as possible because if we're not helping each other then what the fuck are we doing in this world yeah um then anybody can do it really if we can do it i'm sure that anybody can do it and it, it's not hard you just have to like treat people the way you would want them to treat you. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I think it, a lot of it just comes down to not being an asshole. Yeah. Sure. Choose, yeah. choose to not be a dick guys. <laughs> so last that's pretty thing, much it. Last thing I would think of is as far as like actionable plans, like say you're a wrestler listening to this or you're a fan listening to this, what are some things that they could actively do to kind of help with this change or maybe make a um, well, I mean, if you see it, say it. You know what I mean? If you see something, call it out. That's that's the biggest thing. Uh, people do things behind closed doors. People feel comfortable being able to uh, to talk to people about things. Let me get a better light. Um, people feel comfortable uh, like attacking women wrestlers because they're doing it in private and they feel like they can get away with it. And it's not true. You know, uh, people feel like they can uh, belittle other people because they don't think there's going to be any consequences to it. And really, it's, it's just about people taking accountability for their fucking actions. The worst part is uh, there's a large group of people in this world right now. that are absolutely taking accountability for things and trying to grow. They're not perfect, but they do try. Uh, and, and those are not the people that I'm talking to. Yeah. You know, because we appreciate you guys for doing it. But there's another large group of people that's out there that just constantly will just step over people's emotions don't care uh and and it's wrong and i think they just do it because it happened to them so much in their life um either as as a kid or as they were growing up uh and everybody had abuse that they went through when they were younger and everybody had things uh that were going on and to that i can say go to fucking therapy and talk to somebody because it's not fucking fair for you to take it out on the waitress that's been working 12 hours that day. Yeah. Or it's not fair for you to take it out on the, the doctor because they told you something you didn't want to hear. Or the Papa or, John's guy. Yeah, the Papa John's guy that's watching Rick and Morty. <laughs> uh, or, or the guy at Hooters that said he was going to hit your wife. Um, God, yep. No, no, that guy deserved it fucking. So, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, just... You know, Jerry Springer, that shit. Like, be kind to each other yeah. and, and yourself and however you said that shit. Yeah. So. Here we go. Um, be kind to everyone. Yes. Except for Thomas so, uh, Simpson. Whatever except for Thomas Simpson. He's he's literally the only guy I have heat with in wrestling. Yeah. Everybody thinks I have heat with a ton of people. I don't. Uh, I have people that, like, annoy me or the people that piss me off. Uh, I've, I've got a couple people that I just won't deal with cause I don't think they're worth my time, but I don't have, uh, having heat with somebody means I have to care enough about them to have heat. Yeah. And I don't, the only guy is Thomas Simpson. He is a full on piece of shit and should never be around this business again. He, he used to take advantage of, uh, of young kids, uh, just because of his connections, he would try and get them in to say that he could get like, uh, Matt and Jeff allegedly bullshit. He fucking said it. I can get proof. Um, that he was telling kids that he can get them trials for WWE because, through Matt and Jeff, or he would, uh, you know, introduce them to Matt and Jeff to try and get them on or some shit like that and taking them on the road, then trying to take liberties with them and shit. Like it's, there's so many fucking horror stories about that. And he's not the only one. There's, uh, another guy, Zach Zulo that, uh, there's like, it, it was, uh, underage, like he was messaging underage girls. Um, he was running a promotion out in the mountains. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting into everybody. 
uh fuck <laughs> uh yeah and, and another piece of shit it's the same thing it's always the same shit it's always some guy that like doesn't care about himself and doesn't care about anybody else and then he's trying to take advantage of other people whether whether it be like women or like minors or whatever but yeah it's it's ridiculous and it has no fucking place in this business and immediately call that shit out immediately call that out yeah uh doesn't matter you know what i mean like say it say it loud fucking leave you don't have to work for those people like don't feel like you have to take that booking and if they did it cancel that shit Nobody's going to look bad at you about it. The pro- I, I feel like women feel like they get bullied into shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be my, my word versus theirs. What are we going to do? Like, do I, need, do I need to continue on? No, fuck them. D- message me. Like, I'll help. I don't give a shit. We'll, I'll get them involved with you guys. We, they can tell their side of the story. You know what I mean? Like, whatever, yeah. whatever it takes. It, we can't just continue to let things go the way they were. Um. It's got to evolve. It's got to get better. And we got to treat people better because all we want to do is go out there and perform and have a great time and give the fans a great experience and go the fuck home safe. And, and that's it. Like, that's all we want to do. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully the fans want that too. I'm sorry, guys. I feel like I talked for like oh, an hour and 10 minutes of this time. You're all so, good. No, you're good. <laughs> But that's people aren't here for us, really. We have a Broadway podcast that people tune into if they want to hear us talk. <laughs> yeah, that I I actually used the Broadway uh, like analogy earlier when I was talking about the the person I had the conversation with about the uh, political signs earlier today, um, because I asked him uh, again. I was like, if you're working, baby, like if you're coming out to a show and you're working, baby, why would you bring a political sign that is immediately going to alienate? A portion of the off, uh, like the audience, and he's like, "Well, man, people fight over that sign." I was like, "Okay, great. I'm sure people do, and I'm sure people will pay you for it or whatever, and you feel like you're over." But like, isn't your job like? Aren't you getting paid to make everybody kind of like you, or at least as many as possible? I kind of, um, I felt that like, it, it, and this is in a weird way during the show we were at the in the main event right before the match started when. When Herman Tude was like, I dedicate this match to Jesus Christ, and that's oh. fine. But, I'm just, but like, it immediately was like, oh, I care less. Herman <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. like, for as many years as he's been in the business, it's, it's the same stuff we're used to, which is in a different package. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think it's because it just threw, it just threw yeah. me off guard. Yeah. Because Especially I'm like, oh, what's he going to say? Yeah, right I'm into, like, um, I, I did make a joke. I sent uh, a picture to Stephen Meeks of who with two Carrera when I said, "Take this juice in remembrance of me." <laughs> <laughs> Are you Catholic? No, my wife is, but no, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I grew up Catholic. Uh, I'm I'm now uh, like very agnostic. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it, that wasn't planned from my now. Like from what I've heard, there was uh, not a planned promo there. It just kind of happened. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. Things things happen, man. Uh, honestly, uh, I think I think that show was really good for uh, for like his second show. I thought it was solid. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can grow on. There's a hell of a lot of talent there. Oh yeah. And uh, I think it'll work out fine. Like Jay's a really he's like a, a old WCW head from yeah like our conversations. So he's like thinking a lot in that respect. And, and he's, he's been really good about reaching out and asking questions. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and that's been cool. I was was appreciative of him. He at like 1 a.m. At 1 a.m. He shot me a message and thanked me for, for, um, for us being involved in in everything. And then he like shouted us out on his story and said that we did a great job. I don't think he quite knew what we were going to do, but I think after the fact, that he saw we were doing, he's like, "Oh, cool! These dads, dudes actually did some cool stuff." Yeah, yeah, and I, I, you know, we can use that to to like we can use your podcast really to help the promotion uh, there, and and it'll help you guys in the in the same respect because you're going to get more people to interview. Um, you know, like what what we set up last night and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> let's do that. Uh, look, look, guys, this this has been a lot of fun. It's been, it's been like almost two hours now. I don't even know that we talked about most of the stuff we wanted to talk about. I'm sorry, um, but uh, shit. Um, 
Yeah, no, this is a lot of fun. I appreciate that. We should yeah. definitely do this uh, from time to time. I, I don't know if yeah. Yeah. whatever your schedule allows, but yeah. I'm down for whatever. I like talking to you guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a good night, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon.